Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all for appearing. And uh, Ambassador Free, Ambassador McFall, thank you for your service. Ambassador McFall, thank you in particular for serving in Russia. You gave a small snapshot of what it was like to be the ambassador there. Really, anyone who works in our embassy, and I think few Americans realize what a hostile and adverse environment it is. Uh, Ambassador McFaul, you said, if I heard you correctly, that you don't see much hope for a change in Russian behavior as long as Vladimir Putin remains president. Um, it seems to have escaped most recent presidents. You know, the stories of Bill Clinton's late night interactions with Boris Yeltsin are legion and legendary. They tried to get off on the right foot with Vladimir Putin in the late 1990s. Of course, George Bush looked into President Putin's soul and got a sense of his, or looked in his eyes and got a sense of his soul. Barack Obama had the Russian reset, and uh, President Trump has tried to repeatedly uh, have a better relationship with Vladimir Putin. Why does that always come a cropper, no matter what the best intentions of presidents of both parties? That's to me. Yes, it is. Um, well, I'd say two things. Um, one is, it's not continuity over that 30-year history. I want to emphasize that. There have been times in the U.S.-Russian relationship where it has been genuinely cooperative. Uh, no, no one should mix up what we did with, with uh, the Russians in the 90s, cooperative things we did with them, versus where we're at today. Those are, and it has to do, as, as Ambassador Freed said, with the nature of the regime changing, becoming much more autocratic, and then there's, a, there's it's not a spurious correlation that when countries become more autocratic, they become more belligerent towards liberal democracies like ourselves. Uh, that is true. Um, uh, under Putin, it is more autocratic than ever before. It's more repressive than ever before. And as I said you know, in my opening remarks, these are criminal activities. I just want to associate myself with the way Senator Menendez described it. And by the way, a lot of these things never happened even during the Cold War. Annexation didn't happen during the Cold War. Uh, assassinating uh, people in foreign countries using chemical weapons, maybe that, I don't think that happened in the Cold War. A lot of this stuff goes well beyond violating American sovereignty during a presidential election. That didn't happen during the Cold War. So I want to underscore, I think we're in a fundamentally new place. Uh, I, I re re recently wrote a book about this history, and the last chapter is No More Resets. Uh, I have, I'm intimately familiar with the resets, uh, as, as Ambassador Freed knows. No more resets while Putin is in power, right. and we need to not think that we can go back to that. And, and so my strategy is, is and I think there's a lot of agreement here, we need to contain belligerent behavior through some of the legislation that is here, uh, and when we can, in very narrow sets of interests, cooperate where it's in America's national interest, just like we did during the Cold War, by the way. So for instance, most of Helsinki, I think, was a complete disaster. Uh, and by the way, when people say the president's words don't matter, uh, those words mattered to me, because uh, it, it was about me and my personal safety. So that, that, that notion that he can just say things and the policy chugs along, I disagree with that. I think his words have consequences for our Russia policy, and I dare say, Syria and other things, if, Mr. but Mr. but Paul, if I could yeah sure my time please. So the only thing I have in response to what you said, which I with which I largely agree, is that they have taken some steps beyond what happened under the Soviet regimes, but most of the techniques remain the same: assassination, disinformation, subterfuge, so on and so forth. Um, I, I disagree, Senator. I, I so, don't. So, think so they hadn't targeted a presidential election, perhaps. Yes, they did, that's they new. did target, though. For instance, the deployment of mid-range nuclear missiles to Europe in 1983, we now know. That's true. I just yes. I want to read something into the record. I think it's very important. It goes back a little bit earlier than most reports. <laughs> it's Democracy in America. So the last page of Demo the first book of Democracy in America, which was written 100 years before the Cold War started, concludes like this. There are two great peoples on the earth today who, starting from different points, seem to advance toward the same goal. These are the Russians and the Anglo-Americans. Both have grown larger in obscurity, and while men's regards were occupied elsewhere, they have suddenly taken their place in the first rank of nations, and the world has learned of their birth and of their greatness at the same time. All other peoples appear to have nearly reached the limits that nature has drawn and to have nothing more to do than to preserve themselves, but these two are growing. All the others have halted or advanced only with a thousand efforts. These alone march ahead in an easy and rapid pace on a course whose bounds the eyes cannot yet perceive. The American struggles against the obstacles that nature opposes to him. The Russian grapples with men. 
The one combats the wilderness and barbarism, the other civilization bested with all its arms. Thus, the conquests of the American are made with the plowshare of the laborer, those of the Russian with the sword of the soldier. To attain his goal, the first relies on personal interest and allows the force and the reason of individuals to act without directing them. The second, in a way, concentrates all the power of society in one man. The one has freedom for his principal means of action, the other servitude. Their point of departure is different, their ways are diverse. Nonetheless, each of them seems called by a secret design of providence to hold the destinies of half the world in its hands one day. I suggest that the tension and conflict we have with Russia go a lot deeper than any one American or Russian administration and the sanctions response and policy responses we've discussed here are all meritorious and should be pursued to the greatest extent. I don't anticipate much change in Russian behavior either, Mr. McFall, but we can draw a set of boundaries to increase the cost for that behavior and hopefully deter it. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Cotton. Senator